Hello, welcome back. The title here is called The Volume of a Cylinder. This is part one. So here we have a, several lessons where we're doing surface area and volume of various geometric shapes. So we're gonna be throwing a lot of formulas at you, but I don't want you to just memorize formulas. Okay, we all remember them after a while, but I don't want you to just say, okay, he says so, so this is what it's gotta be. I want you to know what you're doing. Because then when you start to understand that what you're doing makes sense, then when you get to more advanced things, you'll remember that, oh, this has probably gonna make sense if I just figure out what the heck they're talking about. So I wanna do that here, volume of a cylinder, okay? I want you to kind of put what you know about volume on the back burner. I've already taught you what volume is, that it's trying to count how many little cubes are inside of a geometric shape, cubic centimeters, or cubic meters, or cubic inches, or cubic kilometers, or whatever it is, how many cubes fit inside. But here in this lesson, I want you to keep that in the back of your mind, that's what we're trying to do, but I want you to think of the volume of an object as being kind of an extension of the area of the, of the object, sort of. I wanna show you what I'm talking about here. So to do that, I'm gonna use a prop here. This is a cube, this is obviously not a cylinder, but it's very easy to understand what I'm talking about when we talk about the cube, right? So what is the volume of a cube, right? You all know the volume of a cube, we've done it before. It's the length of the cube times the width of the cube times the height of the cube. You just multiply all the directions together. You all know this, right? But what does it actually mean? If you think of the bottom of this thing, as having a length and a width, then you see the first two numbers, length times width, is like the area of the bottom here. So this is area of the bottom, but then we take that answer and we multiply it by the height of the thing. So in order to figure out the volume of a cube, there's two ways to think about it. You can think about it as length times width times height as kind of like separate things, or you can think about it as trying to find the area of the bottom of this thing that's gonna be in square millimeters or square inches or square centimeters or whatever it is. Once we have that area of the bottom multiplying by the height of the cube, it's kind of like kind of like clay or something. You can imagine a surface and then by grabbing it and kind of like pulling it up through the height, then you're taking that area and you're extending it through another dimension and that's what we call volume. So then it becomes cubic meters or cubic centimeters or whatever, which is how many little cubes fit inside of this container. So in the back of your mind, I want you to start to think about volume as taking the area of the bottom of an object, and then we multiply by its height to kind of drag that area up through the shape, thereby kind of extruding and finding the total volume of the thing, because then the volume of a cylinder and other objects become much more understandable. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So here we have our first, uh, our first, uh, uh, you know, um, cylinder that we have. I haven't told you what the volume of the cylinder is yet, but now that we've had this discussion, can you take a guess what it might be? Well, if you know the bottom of the cylinder or the top, you could think of it either way. If you wanna think of the area of this, if you could somehow tell me what the area of this bottom surface or top surface is, once we know that area, if we then multiply by the height, we're kind of extruding uh, that, that area through the height of the cylinder, thereby telling us the volume. But this is a different shape. It's not a square bottom, because when you put a cylinder on its end, it's a circle. Of course, it looks like an oval here, but if you tilt it, it's gonna be a circular shape. So what is uh, the, the area of the bottom there, right? It's going to be, the area of the bottom is gonna be, this is a circle. It's pi times r squared. Now we've already covered area of a circle before. Pi is a very special number that we uh, come across in nature and it relates to circles and circular shapes. So if we take the radius of this circle and multiply it by itself and then multiply it by the special number pi, which goes on and on forever, the decimal goes on and on and on forever, we get the surface area of a circle. So uh, the surface area of the circle is pi r squared, but then if we know the surface area of this circle and multiply by the height, which we're gonna put as h, then we're gonna arrive at the volume of this thing. So you see, I could have just started the lesson and I could have just said, hey, the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. And I could have just said, use it. And you would have said, okay, and all the problems, you'd be able to solve them. But you wouldn't know where it came from. You wouldn't know what we were doing and you wouldn't know how to take this idea and extend it to more complicated shapes down the road. Just like the volume of a, of a you know skyscraper or some cube or something, finding the area of the bottom and then multiplying through another dimension gives us, it changes an area into a volume, right? 
Then same concept here. Find the area of this thing, which is the pi r squared part, and then multiply by the height, kind of takes that area, extends it through another dimension, finding volume. These topics are actually, um, they actually come from calculus, and we're not in calculus right now, but I want to give you a little motivation that talking about area and volume and multiplying and pulling it up through another dimension, all that stuff, these are all concepts from calculus. And think, people think calculus is like so incredibly hard. Well, it's challenging in, in spots, I'm not going to lie, but the ideas are not hard. And this fundamental idea is a calculus idea. So if you get it, which I think everybody can, then you're going to do fine in calculus. It's not going to be a big deal. So this is the volume of a cylinder. All right, so let's go down here and do it. The volume of the cylinder is pi times r times squared times h. This is the area of the bottom multiplied by the height of this cylinder. All right, now we have for pi 3.14. This is not the exact value because the decimals go forever, but we're rounding it to two decimal spots. The radius is three, so we're gonna multiply by three squared, and the height here is seven, so we have to multiply by seven. So what we're gonna have is 3.14 multiply by 3 squared, which is 9, and of course I put h here, what I meant to write here was 7, because the height of the cylinder is 7. And so then if you take these numbers, 3.14 times 9 times 7, you're going to get a volume of 197.82 to two decimal places. Of course, pi we rounded to two decimal places, so we'll keep the answer there as well. What are the units of this volume? Well, when we found the area of the um, of the face here, the circle at the end, it was square centimeters. But then we take the square centimeters and we multiply by another centimeter. So then the square centimeters times another centimeters becomes a cubic centimeters. So the area is cubic centimeters are also called centimeters cubed. So it's 197.82 and it's cubic centimeters. Now this means that if we constructed a cylinder with this these dimensions, then how many little cubes, each cube of which is one centimeter on a side called a cubic centimeter, would fit inside this container, then it would be almost 198 of them. Just, you know, essentially just a little bit shy of 198, right? All right, let's take these ideas and skills and move on to problem number two. So now you don't really have to memorize a formula you are then understanding what we're doing. So the volume of a cylinder is the area of the end of the thing, which is pi r squared, and then multiplying that area times the height, pulling that area through another dimension to reveal the volume. So pi is 3.14. The radius as given in this diagram is two, so it's gonna be uh, two squared. And the height uh, in the diagram here is 10. So it's gonna be 3.14, uh, two times two is four, and then we have the times 10 right here. So when you multiply all of these numbers together, 3.14 times four times 10, you will get 125.6. And the units here were in millimeters, so it's millimeters times the area of the end here would be millimeters squared, so then times another millimeter is millimeters cubed, or cubic millimeters. So 125.6 millimeters, cubed. That's how many of these little mi cubic millimeters would actually fit inside of this shape. All right, problem number three. What's the volume of this kind of short and fat looking cylinder? The volume is pi times r times squared. That's the area of the end of the thing. And then we multiply by h to kind of extrude it through the height. So we have 3.14. The radius is six meters, so it's six squared, and the height is seven meters. So we have 3.14, six times six is 36, and seven, of course, is at the end right here. So we have 3.14 times 36 times seven. We multiply all three of these numbers together, we get 791.28, and since the units were in meters all around, this volume is gonna be in cubic meters. So we have 791.28, and it's in cubic meters, 791.28 cubic meters. All right, I think we have one more. We'll solve it right now. All right, here our last problem is a cylinder with these dimensions. What is the volume of a cylinder? It's pi times r squared times the height. So this is the area of the base, and then we multiply through the other dimension. So it's gonna be 3.14, times the radius squared. But what is the radius? It's not labeled here, but we're given the diameter. 
So to find the radius, we cut it in half. So the radius must be four. So four is what goes in here, not eight, four squared. And the height here is 12. So we have 3.14. 4 times 4 is 16, and then we have this times 12 here. Now we have some big numbers. I mean, you might have to do it by hand or a calculator or whatever, but what you're going to get when you multiply all three of these numbers together is 602.88. And the units were in centimeters, so this is in cubic centimeters. 602.88. 602.88 cubic centimeters. All right, I think that about does it for this lesson. We're going to have more problems in the next in the next lesson that we're going to do in just a minute. But for now, I really want to get this idea across to you that to find the volume of something, it's uh, often possible and easier to think of the surface area of the bottom than multiplied by the other dimension, right? It depends on the symmetry. You can't always do this. But in calculus, we can actually find the volume of any uh, crazy shape using similar ideas as this, of course it can get more complicated, but the idea is the same. By adding up little slices of area, that's what you're doing basically. When I say multiply by the height, what you're doing is you're slicing the thing into infinite little sections and you're adding up all the areas throughout another dimension and that sum is what we call multiplication times the height and that is what gives you the volume. This idea dovetails right into calculus. So if you understand this, you can understand, actually it's calculus too, usually when you get to stuff like that. So I'd like you to practice these. Make sure you understand what we're doing. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll wrap up the concept of the volume of a cylinder.